There is no fossil formation on the planet quite as memorable as the Hell Creek Formation. Stretching across rocks that make up parts of modern-day Wyoming, Montana, North Dakota, and South Dakota. Beneath the badlands and rivers of these states lie histories simultaneously iconic and mysterious, contained in the bones of some of the most famous dinosaurs ever to walk the Earth. At the same time and in the same place as the mighty Tyrannosaurus Rex walked Triceratops, perhaps the most famous of all Ornithischian dinosaurs. This huge tank of an animal, equipped with the instantly recognizable horns that provide its name, lived in large numbers along the floodplains and in the woodlands that composed Hell Creek over 66 million years ago. In today's video, we will be meeting this dinosaur up close, examining what it looked like, where it lived, how it survived, and how it was eventually discovered. This is a journey that takes us back to the late Cretaceous period, the very last stand of the non-avian dinosaurs, and the final act of the epic Mesozoic era. Sit back and relax as we take you on a tour through time to meet Triceratops, one of the most famous dinosaurs ever to walk the Earth. Triceratops is a dinosaur that needs very little in the ways of an introduction. This large chasmosaurian ceratopsian was a heavy, bulkily built herbivore, equipped with three horns, two long, tapering ones above the eyes, and one shorter, conical one at the tip of its snout, and a spectacular frill situated at the back of its skull. Think of it as the dinosaurian equivalent of an elephant or rhinoceros, only one that was much, much heavier than its extant comparison, and much larger. Triceratops on average could reach a length of between 8 and 9 meters, weighing in at anywhere between 6 and 12 metric tons. The frill alone could measure up to 2 meters in length, that's longer than the average height of a fully grown man, and the horns were around one meter each. Moreover, the frill was bordered by osteoderms, tough bone protrusions that would have reinforced the structure. The skull was amongst the largest of any known land animal, measuring around a third of the length of the dinosaur as a whole. The animal's mouth was tipped with a beak, with its nostril sitting just behind it. The beak was toothless, with replaceable tooth batteries stacked in the back of its mouth, which would have helped the dinosaur grind down tough vegetation. Behind the skull, Triceratops followed the typical body plan of a chasmosaurine ceratopsian. These were well-fortified animals, capable of standing their ground with four thick, strong limbs, a heavy body, and a short neck. Each limb was tipped with a foot that ended in four hooves, structures that had become commonplace amongst Ornithischian dinosaurs by the end of the Cretaceous period. The animal's body was reinforced furthermore by the presence of ossified tendons, essentially tendons that turned into hardened bone as the animal progressed through life, running straight down its vertebrae. The animal's body was covered in tough scales, some of which rise up from the skin slightly, as has been discovered in incredibly well-preserved fossils. The Triceratops genus contained two species of large ceratopsian dinosaur, Triceratops horridus, the type species, and Triceratops prorsus. At first glance, these two species were very similar, but there were subtle differences, most of which could be found by looking at the horns. Triceratops horridus could be identified by its short nasal horn and long forward-facing brow or orbital horns. Its snout was also slightly more elongated than its cousin. Triceratops prorsus, on the other hand, boasted a slightly longer nasal horn and orbital horns that curved upwards at the tips. It also had a slightly shorter snout than Triceratops horridus. 
Interestingly, the two species of Triceratops have been found at different stratigraphic levels within the rocks of the Hell Creek Formation, which points towards the fact that they did not live at the same time. Triceratops horridus lived slightly earlier and is thought to have been an ancestor of Triceratops prorsus. This is a particularly rare occurrence, where we can actually see a direct ancestor of one dinosaur to another. Other residents of Hell Creek, however, such as Tyrannosaurus rex, live together with both species, coexisting alongside them for several million years. Triceratops' relationship with human beings began in 1887, when George Lyman Cannon unearthed a set of impressive orbital horns, with some of the roof of the skull still attached, in what is today Colorado. Noting the importance of his find, he sent it to Othniel Charles Marsh, one of the most preeminent American paleontologists of the time. He first misidentified the horns as belonging to a giant species of Cenozoic bison and actually gave it a name, Bison altacornis. It wasn't until much later that he re-examined his stance on the bones and identified them as belonging to a large herbivorous dinosaur. By this time, three well-preserved Triceratops skulls had been discovered and he was able to reliably describe the animal but the official name would come later. The holotype specimen of Triceratops was dug up in 1888 from Wyoming's Lance Formation, and at first it was known simply as Ceratops. At the time the holotype was unearthed, Marsh was still deciding whether or not this was a species of bison, and so gave it a name meaning horned face. It wasn't until the fossil was prepared in further detail that Marsh was able to note the presence of the third horn. This was now decidedly not a bison, and so the name Triceratops horridus was issued, translating to horrible three-horned face. In recent years, many immaculately preserved Triceratops fossils have been unearthed from the rocks of the central and northern United States of America. One such find made international headlines in 2014, discovered by Craig Pfister, and later nicknamed Horridus. He discovered pelvic and femur bones projecting from rocks in Montana and set to excavating it. The process took more than one year, and by the time it was finished, Pfister noted that he had discovered one of the most complete Triceratops specimens known to the fossil record. His find contained more than 260 bones, including a full skull, most of the torso, all four limbs and tail. It is now on display at the Melbourne Museum in Australia and are the most complete dinosaur bones on display in any Australian museum. Horridus is thought to have been washed into a river after dying where it quickly sank to the bottom and was covered by sediment, before scavengers could pick apart the carcass. It is unknown if Horridus was male or female. Triceratops was a definite herbivore, indicated by their columns of tooth batteries adapted to feeding on tough vegetation. These teeth were replaced throughout their life as they were worn down from tearing apart plants. In fact, throughout its life, a single Triceratops could grind through as many as 800 teeth, depending on the age and size of the individual and the specific plant matter it was eating. Judging by the plant matter available at the time it lived and the build of the teeth, Paleontologists have suggested that Triceratops' favorite foods might have been palm leaves and cycads, but potentially ferns too. This could indicate that it spent a lot of time feeding on open plains, much like a modern-day rhinoceros. Scientists have come to this conclusion on the animal's dietary preferences by reconstructing its head, which was hung lower than herbivores who typically feed in trees and taller growing vegetation. This was an animal that browsed from vegetation that either grew close to the ground 
or had been knocked over by the animal's weight. The most notable features of Triceratops, the horns and the frill, have been the subject of paleontological debate over the years as to what exactly they were used for. Contrary to popular belief, it is thought that the most likely function of the horns was that they were used in display, possibly when communicating or trying to attract a mate. As such, it has been theorized that the frill would have been brightly colored or decorated with elaborate patterns that would have been particularly eye-catching during courtship. The classic depictions of Triceratops show the animals locked in combat with one another or with a predator, using their horns to pierce the flanks of a Tyrannosaurus or to spar with a rival male. Surprisingly, there is relatively little evidence for this and much of it is built on speculation. While it would have been possible for Triceratops to face an attacker head on and survive in one piece, it is thought that the primary function of the dinosaur's impressive headgear was to display, not to attack. As for the fighting with one another, very few wounds present on Triceratops skulls appear to have been inflicted by the horns of another Triceratops. This isn't to say that the animals did not compete in this way, but it may have been a slightly rarer occurrence than once thought. Triceratops is often shown as an animal that lived in great herds across the plains and woodlands of Hell Creek, but this too is something that is primarily built on speculation. Only one site in Montana is known to have yielded Triceratops bones from many individuals in one place, which may represent the dinosaurs traveling as a family rather than a huge herd. However, there may be some other evidence that points to the direction that these dinosaurs did travel in herds. On one Triceratops specimen, the tail features bones that had been co-ossified or fused together after breakage and repair. According to Illy and Fowler, the paleontologists that described the find, another Triceratops traveling behind the one with the broken tail may have stepped on it, causing the wound. This could point to herding activity. Regardless of the herding behavior, Triceratops was certainly one of the most common dinosaurs of the Hell Creek Formation in its day, making up a possible five-sixths of all large dinosaurs in the region at the end of the Cretaceous. Incidentally, it was also one of the last dinosaurs to survive, witnessing and suffering the effects of the catastrophic and Cretaceous extinction event. 66 million years ago. Triceratops has been found across several sites in North America, primarily the Hell Creek Formation, but also across the Lance Formation, Evanston Formation, Scollard Formation, Denver Formation, and Laramie Formation. Hell Creek is most notably associated with the dinosaur and was a region of many well-known extinct animals. Next to Triceratops, the mighty Tyrannosaurus was the most famous genus known from Hell Creek and was one of Triceratops' predators. Given the size and weight of Triceratops, it would not have been easy for even a fully grown Tyrannosaurus to tackle an adult. And even if the horns weren't used in defense, the herbivore would still have been able to pack a punch. Other theropods present in the region included Cygnathids, feathered relatives of the Oviraptorids such as Anzu and Leptorhynchus, Ornithomimids such as Ornithomimus and Struthiomimus, and Dromaeosaurids such as Achiroraptor and Dakotoraptor. Ornithischians known from Hell Creek that lived alongside Triceratops included Ankylosaurus and Pachycephalosaurus, two of the most famous herbivores ever to live, as well as Edmontosaurus, Taurosaurus, and Thescalosaurus. As pterosaurs soared overhead and small reptiles basked in the sun's rays next to the rivers and wetlands, many small mammals scuttled through the forest. Many of these were diminutive, tree-shrew-like mammals, but their day was soon approaching. 
The looming Chicxulub meteor impact would carve the way for mammals to rise in strange new forms in the forthcoming Cenozoic era, as the age of the dinosaurs was brought to an abrupt end. Hell Creek is primarily composed of clays, mudstones, and sandstones, which indicate that in the late Cretaceous period the region was a warm, flat floodplain, surrounded by forests and separated by rivers, which teemed with life. Angiosperm trees, covered in vibrant flowers, would have lined these forests, making Hell Creek a particularly colorful place to live in the Mesozoic. Other plants included conifers, cycads, ginkgos, mosses, and ferns. Hell Creek was situated close to the western interior seaway, a wide body of water that cut the continent that would eventually become North America in half. In this sea, huge marine reptiles such as plesiosaurs and mosasaurs thrived, which may have occasionally come into contact with Hell Creek's dinosaurs as they came down to the water. Triceratops had the misfortune of being one of the final non-avian dinosaurs to live in the Mesozoic era. As the Cretaceous came to a close, so did the reign of animals such as Triceratops, as the meteor that killed the dinosaurs came crashing down to Earth, obliterating everything in its path. The Triceratops that didn't immediately succumb to the impact would have faced harsh conditions in the world they lived in, coated in ash and nearly void of edible vegetation. Eventually, Triceratops would disappear from this world, and their remains would be discovered millions of years later by humans. There is a lot we are still learning about this dinosaur. But with future discoveries, we may be able to unravel the mysteries of Hell Creek and what part Triceratops played in this ecosystem exactly.